We begin our service this morning with our call to worship. You may remain seated. Who is wise and understanding among us? Those who seek wisdom and understanding each and every day. Those who delight in God and meditate on God's law. Welcome everyone here this morning on this last Sunday of summer. Where did it go? I've got several announcements this morning. Uh, Pastor Rick is away today helping Pastor Bonnie in the shared ministry services. And I'd like to thank Pastor Bob for his part again today. Thank you. Uh, Pastor Bonnie is in Baden and Pastor Rick is doing two services, one in Milverton and one in Moserville. I'm not sure, but this could continue on into the fall as Pastor Bonnie is still looking after three congregations by herself. We will keep you posted. On Saturday, October 23rd, we're going to do our socks, sausage, and sauerkraut dinner again, and it's going to be takeout like last year. You can pick up your meal between 5.30 and 7, and like last year, the price is $20, and $5 from each ticket will go to Shelter Link and House of Blessing. We'll start selling tickets next week, and when 100 tickets are sold, that's going to be we're sold out. And the last announcement is about our annual meeting. It will be held on Sunday, October 3rd at 11 o'clock. Copies of the annual report are available here. If your shepherd hasn't delivered yours or you don't have an email address to copy it off the computer. I am making this announcement on behalf of your congregational council and this is the first official announcement of that meeting. Uh, please mark this date on your calendar. This meeting was postponed seven months from March and as you know, we need 25 members to form a quorum to hold this meeting. Does anyone have any other announcements? Seeing none, we'll just take a moment to prepare our hearts and minds for worship. Please rise as you are able for our confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, whose teaching is life, whose presence is sure, and whose life is endless. Amen. Let us confess our sins to the one who welcomes us with an open heart. God, our comforter, write the lost sheep in the front of strength. All have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. By the gift of grace in Christ Jesus, God makes you righteous. Receive with glad hearts the forgiveness of all your sins. Amen. Our gathering song number 389, we invite our choir to join us and we may be seated.
continue with our prayer of the day and you may remain seated. Let us pray. We draw near to you, O God, source of all understanding, and ask you to draw near to us. Teach us your wisdom from above that we may bear good fruit in our lives. Root us beside the streams of your wisdom that the green leaves of our goodness fed by your insight, may not wither. Amen. We continue with our readings of scripture. Our first reading this morning comes from Jeremiah chapter 11. Today's reading tells of the suffering of the prophet Jeremiah, who announced God's word to Judah, but was met with intense opposition and persecution. Jeremiah continues to trust in God in the midst of his suffering. The reading. It was the Lord who made it known to me, and I knew. Then you showed me their evil deeds. But I was like a gentle lamb led to the slaughter, and I did not know it was against me that they devised schemes, saying, Let us destroy the tree with its fruit. Let us cut him off from the land of the living so that his name will no longer be remembered. But you, O Lord of hosts, who judge righteously, who try the heart and the mind, let me see your retribution upon them, for to you I have committed my cause. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our psalm this morning is Psalm 54, and we'll read responsibly by half verse. Save me, O God, by your name. In your might, defend my cause. Hear my prayer, O God. Words of my mouth. For strangers have risen up against me, and the ruthless have sought my life, those who have no regard for God. Behold, God is my helper, the Lord who sustains my life. Render evil to those who spy on me. In your faithfulness, destroy them. I will offer you a free will sacrifice and praise your name, O Lord, for it is good. For you have rescued me from every trouble. My eyes look down on my enemies. Our second reading this morning comes from James chapter 3. The wisdom God gives unites our hearts and minds. Instead of living to satisfy our own wants and desires, we manifest this wisdom in peace, gentleness, mercy, and impartiality towards others. The reading. Who is wise and understanding among you? Show by your good life that your works are done with gentleness born of wisdom. But if you have bitter envy and selfish ambitions in your heart, Do not be boastful and false to the truth. Such wisdom does not come down from above, but is earthly, unspiritual, and devilish. For where there is envy and selfish ambition, there will also be disorder and wickedness of every kind. But the wisdom from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, willing to yield, full of mercy and good fruits, without a trace of partiality or hypocrisy. And a harvest of righteousness is sown in peace for those who make peace. Those conflicts and disputes among you, where do they come from? Do they not come from your cravings that are at war within you? You want something and do not have it, so you commit murder. And you covet something and cannot obtain it, so you engage in disputes and conflicts. You do not have because you do not ask. You ask and do not receive because you ask wrongly in order to spend what you get on your pleasures. Submit yourselves therefore to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. Draw near to God and he will draw near to you. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We will now invite our choir back up and we will sing hymn number 843.
Please rise as you are able for the gospel. And we acclaim, Alleluia. God has called us through the proclamation of the good news that we may obtain the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. Alleluia. The Holy Gospel according to St. Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus and his disciples went on and passed through Galilee. He did not, anyone, he did not want anyone to know it, for he was teaching his disciples, saying to them, The Son of Man is to be betrayed into, the hands, into human hands, and they will kill him. And three days after being killed, he will rise again. But they did not understand what he was saying and were afraid to ask him. Then they came to Capernaum, and when he was in the house, he asked them, What were you arguing about on the way? But they were silent, for on the way they had argued with one another who was the greatest. He sat down, called the twelve, and said to them, Whoever wants to be first must be last of all and servant of all. Then he took a little child and put it among them. And taking it in his arms, he said to them, Whoever welcomes one such child in my name welcomes me. And whoever welcomes me welcomes not me, but the one who sent me. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. How many of you subscribe to this magazine? This is our church's magazine. And for the past 30 years as a pastor, I've been receiving it free of charge. But this past week when I received it, I suddenly, I suddenly discovered an article that speaks to me. It doesn't speak well for our church, but the article speaks well to us. It speaks to us as we are today, and this is its title. COVID grief, loss, grief, and, long, and the long road back from COVID exile. It was written by Jamie Foley, and he was the, he is a registered psychotherapist and certified spiritual care practitioner with the spiritual care team at Grand River Hospital in Kitchener. Jamie Foley hits the nail right on the head when he talks about COVID. He talks about what we have lost. And this is what he lists. We have lost presence. Just think of that for a moment. We have lost presence. How can we be present with others and with ourselves? And he goes on, we have lost predictability, work, purpose, safety and choice, patience. Oh, how often we lose our patience in this situation. Loss of focus, freedom, loss of rhythm and routine, of potential, of community, of contact, of space, of touch, of variety of belonging. 
Now, I know that these are losses that we experience in our life from day to day as it goes on. But in the context of the pandemic, it has done something to us. It has been more than a constant background experience, Jamie writes. It's become a series, a steady series of walls. I look at the back of this book, this magazine. On the last page, our national bishop always writes an article. How many of you are aware of the fact that for the past three years, we have been following a four-year emphasis called Living Our Faith? Me either. I've read it a number of times, but it seems so distant from me. And this, this emphasis is meant is meant for four things. The first year was to pray. The second year, we are, were to read the scriptures. The third year is the year of worship, and that's this year. And next year, the emphasis will be love. And our national bishop goes on to describe to us a manner in which we could have personal and family devotions. I think we all know that. And I think we can all do it quite well. But worship is much more than this. Worship is one of the losses that we experience. And no one is addressing it. It seems like we don't just live in, 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 in a church where everybody is one. It seems like there's a national church, and there's a synod, which is a church, and then there's us who are gathered here. How are we together? How are we won? What has happened? What have we lost? We have lost much as a church. And so we ask, what did the scriptures say to us today in terms of our losses and our seeking to find a way out of our losses? We look first of all at Jeremiah. Jeremiah was... Well, he's called the prophet of suffering because he had to endure so much. It wasn't that he had health problems or anything like that. It's because he proclaimed the word of the Lord to the people of Israel and told the people of Judah that God was going to punish them and God was going to, uh, to, get rid of, to take them away into exile because they no longer... We're following God. And of course, the people didn't like it. And when he went to his own hometown, they plotted to kill him. Fortunately, that didn't happen because God preserved him. And Jeremiah persisted in being the voice of God among the people. Perhaps there's a message for us, too, in our lostness, that we need to recover the voice of God and share it with one, with one another and those whom we meet. When the world around us ignores God, we need to hang in because a world that ignores God dies. It could certainly have been Jeremiah who wrote the psalm that we read today because, uh, because of what it expresses, although I don't think it was Jeremiah who really wrote it. But it's a psalm that's written by someone who has gone through troubles and God has helped them and then is facing more troubles and says that God will lead him out of those troubles. It is a prayer to be saved. A prayer that recognizes that God, has that God has rescued him from many troubles and will continue to do so. In our losses, God is 
present. Then we get to James. Of course, he is he's so practical. He talks about wisdom. And he identifies two types of wisdom. There's the wisdom of the world. It is earthly, unspiritual, and devilish. Actually, it's a false wisdom. But then he says we need the wisdom from above. And this is how he describes it. Pure, peaceable, gentle, willing to yield, full of mercy and good fruits, without a trace of partiality or hypocrisy. Good time to ask ourselves the question, what is the wisdom that guides my life? What is the wisdom whereby I live? Wisdom from above is really the only true wisdom. When we come to Mark's gospel, it is very unusual. Jesus is with his disciples, and he takes them aside privately. Usually we see and hear Jesus in the gospels proclaiming and preaching and including everybody around him in what he says. But in this case, he takes the disciples aside and tells them for the second time that the Son of Man is going to suffer and die and rise again. And Mark tells us that they just don't understand. I suppose if I were in their shoes, I wouldn't understand either. And I know that many times when I read the scriptures, I find things that I don't understand. But I look to God to give me understanding for wisdom from above. Jesus recognized what happens to the disciples, that they were silent. They were afraid to ask him about it. And instead, they argued between themselves about who was the greatest. So Jesus took them aside again when they arrived at Capernaum and sat down with them and said, took a little child and held the child and said, whoever welcomes one such child in my name welcomes me. And whoever welcomes me, welcomes the one who sent me. Just think of that picture. Take up into your hands a little child. And what experience do you have? Does it not restore many of the losses that we feel and give us hope? And give us the tenderness that we need to live with ourselves and with one another. To live in the name of Christ. I think it's very significant that Jesus says, whoever, well, whoever takes up a child in my name. This is God connecting with us. This is God coming to us. This is God helping us recognize life in ourselves and that life is from God and that God continues to give us life and redeem our life. The word of God, I think, is frightening to many people because it invites us into new directions, new directions that we don't really know. Something simple as love your neighbor as you love yourself. If you have a neighbor you don't like, how are you going to love them like you love yourself? It invites us into directions that we don't know, but nurtures us with wisdom from above that we might be God's people. Things become clear 
with wisdom from above. The disciples didn't understand it. In fact, when they witnessed it, Jesus suffering and dying and rising, they gathered by themselves to protect themselves, to be away from whatever might harm them. But finally, the wisdom from above came in the person of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit who abides in us and who abides with us and who nurtures us as a people of God. Do you remember the story of Zacchaeus? The little guy who went up in the tree because he couldn't see Jesus. And then Jesus said, come down Zacchaeus, I'm going to go to your house and dine with you. And he went. And of course Zacchaeus saw the error of his ways and said, I'm going to follow Jesus. And those who were around were critical because Jesus went and ate with a sinner, one who was known to be a cheat. But that's why Jesus came. Jesus' statement to these people was simply, the Son of Man came to seek out and to save the lost. In our lostness these days, God is seeking us out. We need to seek wisdom from above, from one, from one another, from the scriptures, from worship, from being God's people. This is where our life is leading us. Amen. Join now in hymn 781, Children of the Heavenly Father, and invite our choir. I can see I'm a little bit remiss here. We need to share the peace. So as you are able, think about the loss of touch and how we in sharing the peace do touch each other with our eyes. How important that is. The peace of the Lord be with you all. 
share that peace together. Continue with our offering prayer. You are the generous one, full of mercy and goodness for your creation. Send your wisdom with these gifts that they may reach those who need your love and welcome. Bring about a harvest of goodness through these gifts sown in peace. Amen. Please rise for our prayers of intercession. Freed by God in Christ to live and love and serve, we pray for the church, those in need, and all of God's beloved creation. Gracious God, you gather congregations together by the power of your word. Bless leaders with the gifts of wisdom and discernment as they seek to make your church the community for which you long. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Creative God, blue whales and honeybees sing the goodness of the earth. Glaciers and deserts declare your greatness. Make us good stewards of our home for the generations to come. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Sovereign God, you raise up governments to protect the widow and orphan. Bless citizens with wisdom and discernment as they choose leaders. Inspire leaders to always seek the common good. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Loving God, you desire health and wholeness. Reconcile the conflicts and disputes among us. Teach us to heal the trauma of racism and poverty. Break our hearts open to all those who are suffering in any way of mind, body, or spirit, especially those we name aloud or in silence. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Welcoming God, you place children among us. Teach us to honor the children in our midst and to pay attention to what they can teach us about who you are. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You surround us with a cloud of witnesses who announce the good news of abundant life to a sad and needy world. Make us a pilgrim people, always telling the story of your loving kindness. We remember today Roy Sippel. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Into your wide embrace, gracious God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your boundless mercy through Jesus Christ, our Redeemer. Amen. We are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Therefore, we can pray confidently. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. blessing of Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Our sending hymn number 545.
545. We may be seated. When we come before God in humility and honesty, God draws near to us with forgiveness and renewed blessing. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. <laughs> 